it is that time of year again, and certainly one of my favorite times of the year for this game. If for no other reason than we get this iconic music that is certainly one of the most popular tracks in all of Final Fantasy XIV. But of course, we're also here because we have eggs aplenty, which means it's time for Hatching Tide. And so, with that in mind, greetings people of the world, Mathai Griffin back with you for the continuation of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV and Walker. So, today, Rika is dressed up in her spring and jacket from a few years ago from Hatching Tide, and this time, I'm also doing something different because in the last while that I've been recording my Let's Play of Final Fantasy XIV, I've been noticing a lot of issues with the frame rate dropping, and also with the uh, stream just, um, just with recording just going completely awry and blacking out, and just getting really looking really bad. So today, I decided that I would screen capture the episode this time, and also do it on the PC version rather than on the console version. So. If all goes well, hopefully we will have a much better thing for all of you to enjoy because I should be doing better than giving you guys a choppy image of a video game that I've been playing for the better part of nine years. Um, so I am looking at possibly getting a replacement for my Elgato. It's been a six, it's a six year old capture card now, so I do need to swap it out clearly. Um, it seems to have no issue with my stream, but whenever I'm doing um, standalone recording with the capture card, it just will just do the things that I mentioned, drop frames and everything goes all horribly wrong. So hopefully today, with doing screen capture, that will not be an issue. So, since we are here in Miketo's amphitheater in Gridania, let's go on over and speak with the one and only character who is truly, as far as appearances are concerned, the best of Mathia with her blue and white tail, and also the best of Rika, given the fact that she has Rika's cat tats on her. Plus, this is the first time I noticed it when I was reviewing footage for Hatching Tide, but Jiri also has Mathia's green eyes too, so she really does have the best of both Mathia and Rika. And it's really cool, and so she's definitely my all-time favorite um, special event NPC. And so today, let's go and give her a hand. Let's so let's speak with Julie by taking on the quest for 2023's Hatching Tide, which explains the creepy guy in the robe and the lantern who's dressed along, dressed like a Tomberry at level 15, entitled "Get Along and Play Knife." You feel eyes upon you, and they're not. Just Gili, a Leopold's. So why is this creepy tall Tomberry among us? Greetings, friend, and a happy hatching tie to you! May I say that you look exquisite as always, Vika? Tis always a pleasure. Oh, I am most eager to share my latest dream with you. It was highly peculiar to say the least. You see, I beheld visions of that chilling creature of legend, the Tomberry. Well, from personal experience, that's not always so. If past experience has told me anything, it is that painstakingly recreating my dreams is sure to bring about good fortune. However, as Tom Bears are not but figments of old fables, I began to doubt whether I could do justice to their ghastly appearance. Yeah, why would you want to do that? As we look over here. But all that changed when this gentleman generously offered his assistance. Greetings, my lady. My name is Hamlin, and I am what you might call a supreme connoisseur and passionate aficionado of all things Thornberry. <laughs> Which is why you're basically cosplaying as one. As you may or may not be aware, Thornberrys have heads as round and adorable as any egg. Which is why I believe they are the perfect addition to the Hatching Tide festivities. So, I don the superior mantle of Thornberry and present myself to Miss Geely here. <laughs> What luck, wouldn't you agree? Hamlin was kind enough to furnish our other volunteers with Tomberry guises, and we're all hard at work preparing for the upcoming fun. Yeah, like Tomberries? Seriously? Yeah, I'm not convinced. Such is often the reaction of the unenlightened, yes, but it only fuels the fire of my passion. <laughs> Heavy breathing for some reason. Maybe too passionate. 
Considering my dream, I think that these festivities present a unique opportunity to share the Tomberry's charm of the world. There is but one problem. And what's that? A group of souls has been making mischief throughout town, playing pranks, sabotaging the decorations. So it's how, it seems like souls have now spread themselves out to Gridania proper now. We used to see them in the East Shroud. Luckily, it seems a mere glance of the Tombay form is enough to send those leafy brigands fleeing in terror. Is it not remarkable how such an adorable visage can strike fear into the hearts of some? Does not the contradiction of the Tomberry's nature invigorate your very soul? Our other volunteers are using the Tomberry glasses to shoo away the stilts as best they can, but we still find ourselves short-handed. Would you be running to assist us, Rika? Uh, just until the mischief is mitigated? I guess I can do that. My sister is thanks. Hamlin has prepared a plethora of glasses for us, so I'm sure he will have one that fits you. <laughs> yeah, Ezel says to go with that, he can't wait to get started. Yeah, we'll wait for our Hamlin to show up here and send us on our way. We just need everyone to file in. And yeah, we do have people who, are, of course, all dressed for the occasion and are all ready to go. So, let's do the Hamlet. Now then, let us commence with this most sacred of ceremonies. Come closer. Mm. You must continue wearing the Tomberry guise in order to progress. Speak with Hamlet to restore or prolong the garment change. As you can see, everyone's now all decked out in Tomberry attire, although. Given what we know about Tomberries and how short they are, like, this definitely does not look necessarily convincing, but whatever works, I guess, on Sylphs. Yeah, Sylphs wouldn't be aware of the Tomberry because Tomberries are in Lanosea, as we all well know. So let's begin by finding this wily whiner. Well, if these ones can't have fun with Tusk ones, walking ones won't have any fun either! This one will make sure of it! Yeah, how about you? You can have fun with me, yeah. How about some eggy, eggy, stabby fun? Yeah, we're not trying to threaten them, we're just trying to scare them off. Have fun with me! And my creepy tail! Ah! Monstrous one! This is why these ones need tusked ones! Tusked ones? You got. You mean you have backup? Well, whatever your backup may be, I'll make sure to take care of it, too. Now we have a pair, an excited amphibian lo lover, and an exultant interloper. Hide well, working one, then spring on him, make the working one screech and jump! <laughs> this one can't wait! Well, did you just call me a warty one? Yeah, what gives? Yeah, they are definitely panicked, as you saw the one had its face in its uh, hands in its face. It's trying to cover its eyes from my gaze. And then over here, we have an unsure accomplice and a cocksure crook. But if these ones are naughty, elderly elder one will become scolding one. No one will know it was these ones. Besides, it isn't that naughty. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll be the judge of that. Uh, please! This one didn't mean any harm! Sneak! Sticky one! Get it away! We definitely have them running scared, that's for sure. So now we have to dug a hole back on over to Miketo's Amphitheater and let Hamlin know that we were successful. I don't think I've ever noticed that NPC before. Huh, interesting. How long has that NPC been there? Hamlin? I trust you returned from a job well done. I am sure Miss Sheely would love to hear the particulars. You may relay your thoughts after I relive you of that outfit. Well, let's head on over to Sheely. Yeah, all successful. Mission accomplished. A 
I'm glad to hear those stuffs flutter back home. Thank you for all of your help, Rika. Yes, you perform most admirably. Not only in deed, but interests. Upon beholding a Tombe performing such shops as Sax and Bella, the citizens of Gardani are sure to have warmed to our adorable paragons of pointy justice. All according to plan. Our other volunteers are currently making the rounds and checking the rest of the decorations for any residual surprises, but I dare say we should be able to officially begin the celebrations soon. All that's left is to wait for our Archon eggs to arrive from Uldar. You mean you didn't bring them yet? Which reminds me, Master Pollen sends us the guards. He is currently recovering from injuries and staying from a particularly sharp beak, and will be therefore unable to attend Hatching Tide this year. Yeah, the chicken man from a couple of years ago. But he generously sent us dozens and dozens of delightful eggs. So many, in fact, that we had to commission the gods and the skill for help with their decoration. You've certainly been busy, haven't you? I hope you enjoyed the festivities. Something tells me this shall be a Hatching Tide to remember. Uh oh. What happened? He yeah, had Sheila's friend Nanota. Nanota? Whatever is the matter? It's the eggs, Sheila. The Archon eggs. Self so swarmed the shipment as it entered the central shroud and sapped the delivery mammoth into a frenzy. The caravan has been brought to a complete standstill. Uh oh. Yeah, why are Self's giving us such a hard time? I thought we earned the respect, but. <laughs> Clearly not with the members of the Hatching Tide crew. If only you had seen it. The chaos, the carnage, the eggs! Our beautiful Archon eggs scattered across the ground, cells pilfering them like springings, and that smoking mammoth rampaging like an all go possessed. T'was sheer mayhem, Sheely! The cells presented no demands, offered no reason behind their rampant pillaging. But why do they keep squeaking them out? Tossed ones, and no fair, and why should walking ones have all the fun? What do you suppose they meant? Yeah, Gili? Do you have insight? Oh, I heard the Sils once held an annual spring festival, but there was an incident involving one of their fighting balls. I believe that was the end of the such festivities. That would explain tossed ones. But yeah, they had fighting boars to help them? I guess they rebelled. I understand how it must paint them to see us cheerfully prepare for hatching tide, but those ill-gotten eggs won't ease their suffering. We must find a way to recover them. Which brings us over here. <laughs> if I may be so bold, I believe I have the perfect solution to your conundrum. Rika's assistance will be crucial, Hava. You will lend us your aid, yes? Yeah, I gotta do what's gotta be done, so... We'll take 1,440 experience points and 286 skill. Then proceed to move on, because yeah, there's more to be done. So now we gotta turn over to Hamlin, and he'll give us the next quest. Also at level 15, entitled Chaos, Carnage, Eggs. Hamlin is quivering in his excitement. <laughs> Yeah, clearly he is. You wish to lend us your strength to my brilliant plan, do you? Very well. Our divine mission is as follows. We must adorn ourselves in the guise of the Tombele and scare the Sylphs away from the fallen eggs. It may seem like a rather familiar tactic, but Terra cuts as sharply as a knife in the right hands. As does the power of the Tombele. We shall remind those so, so what adorable horror lurks in the shadow. It is time to take the Tornberry's naturally winsome and captivating visage and transform it into a mask of pure evil. Observe. <laughs> yeah, like that. I suppose that makes sense. But what of the delivery mammoth? In its panic state, it might be as easy a mistake as for not but common egg thieves. But perhaps not so common considering the geysers? That's where Rika's participation is crucial. Even an overexcited automaton is no match for an adventurer versed in the arts of warfare. <laughs> of course, I shan't be so cool as to send you into battle as defenseless as a swaddled tomb babe. 
You may rely upon me to perform the necessary enhancements upon your guys. But your grant on his stabby sweetheart the ability to withstand even the harshest of electrified sucks. Uh, in theory, anyway. In theory. In the rest of adversity lies opportunity, as they say. Or rather, in the midst of scattered archived eggs stands the noble Tomberry that all might witness this triumphant glory. <laughs> and so Gili has the plan what we're gonna do about it. Very well. Let us proceed with Hamlet's plan and see that our eggs are recovered safely. I'll do what I can. Excellent. I shall commence the enhancement of this guise at once, and have it ready for deployment in two flicks of a Tormberry's blade. Rika, let us meet where the bells of destiny toll. Two arms! Yeah, you can count on me. So off he goes, and so we'll meet up with him in the central shroud, so let's make our way there right now. Alright, so we've arrived at the destination where the fate is to take place, so yeah, this is a this is fate oriented. We've had a number of these in previous hatching ties before, and so we'll have to do so again. So we're just waiting on Hamlin's arrival and then we will be on our way. And also you may have noticed something different. That's because a new custom delivery challenge was introduced in patch 6.35 that involves um, the, uh, the Pixies in Il Meg, and if you accomplish everything with them, you get this little thing as a mount, so... And you also get a miniaturized version to wear as a headpiece, if you can believe it, so... Now we just sit and wait and hope we get the activation for the bait soon. Oh, the fate is active. Alright, let's go ahead. So the moment we join the fate, we are automatically turned into Tomberry. And now we automatically have to dodge Silks. Yeah, you'll see the Silks have a lot of opportunities to have their way with us. The big challenge though is not getting hit by one. So as many as we can, can. So it's basically like a fetch quest. Thing. You can pick up Arcane Eggs manually, or you can also get them to be dropped by Silk. Yeah, it is a bit of a challenge to catch them all, or any at all, it's possible. Fortunately, unlike other um, situations where we had the Silk um, things where we needed to catch, um, and you'll have a very limited time to actually get anything. Um, this is one of those fates where once enough of the stuff has been turned in, you'll get the opportunity still within one minute to um, contribute. So that way you are still contributing to the fate and you don't get shortchanged on um, accomplishment for the fate itself. Of course, the chance is always to be getting hit by all these random silks. Yeah, it's never easy to deal with these things. The fact that you can participate, under, even under these circumstances. Oh, what the heck? Okay, that was weird. And I don't know what's causing this to happen, to be honest. I don't know why my hotbar keeps changing. This may be the fact that I'm playing on PC that this is happening, but this really shouldn't be. So let's see how many I got to turn over. Ooh, 16! Oh, we're still being hit, though, by random AoE. Let's see how many more we can get before time expires. Over here. Yeah, that's strange that the uh, AoE went as weird as this is. Yeah, they also do have a range on it. A very short range. Also doesn't help that the arc that the mammoth is doing its thing. 
Okay, I think that's enough, so let's turn the remaining over to Hamlin. We got 26 before time expires. And so there we go. We got the maximum award for the quest, so let's head on back over to Gridania. And so back over at Miketo's Amphitheater, let's complete the quest by speaking with Geely. And here comes our hero now! Hamlin has just been regaling us with the tale of your fellow, Rika! We can't thank you enough for recovering this Archon Eggs! Truly from the bottom of our hearts and purses, thank you! My single regret is that no rapturous bystanders were present in those solitary woods to witness such valorous displays. Alas, the Tomberry's Majesty will once again pass unacknowledged, yet such is the way of true goodness. The hero that works in secrecy for the betterment of all, my friends, their name is Swanberry. Profound, I'm sure. I must say, Hamlin, your unflagging devotion to all things Tomberry is both remarkable and admirable. Yeah, it certainly is. Oh, pardon me! Oh, who goes there? How about a bunch of kids? We were in those solitary woods, and we saw what he did for us. Uh, what the Tombatties did for us. I was heartbroken when I still snatched away the Archon Egg that my friend had given me. Yeah, we're gonna have to teach them a lesson when we go back to the East Shroud. But thanks to you, it was recovered safely. You Tombatties have my eternal thanks. I only wish you didn't have to scare the Sims so badly. The poor things. Is there no other way to deter their mischief? Silver Palin, perhaps? Or my Tomberry senses are tingling. <laughs> Well, I don't want to speak for Hamlin, so... Silver Pellin, perhaps? <laughs> yeah, what do you think, big man? Uh, indeed. Uh, consider this. If we decorate our eggs with a Tornberry theme, the Sils wouldn't dare snatch or sabotage them. <laughs> Can you imagine that? A dark green coat on a large egg with two golden circles for eyes? Not bad at all. Perhaps even cute. These kids certainly seem to like that idea. Shelly, perhaps this is what your dream foretold. Not just Tomberry guises, but Tomberry eggs and decorations as well. Yeah, what do you think there, Shelly? In which case, we should send word to our old on goldsmiths that we'd like another batch of Archon eggs and some striking shades of Tomberry. Yeah, we're certainly down with that idea. Of course! All our eggs are packaged during transit, meaning the Sylphs will likely continue their mist on the city. I'm tempted to send a Tormary guard with the caravan, but the rule from Ulda is far too long to attempt in such a guise. <laughs> Hamlin didn't seem to have a problem getting here. We shall continue to consider possible alternatives, but in the meantime, would you happen to come across, should you happen to come across another waylaid shipment, I hope I can count on your assistance. Uh, as a Tormary, of course. Yeah, certainly. Well, seeing as our Archon eggs have finally arrived, I dare say it is time to officially get cracking. Let the hatching tide festivities begin! And that'll happen after we take our 1440 experience points, 660 gil, plus the ballroom etiquette, unnerving undulations, an illustrated manual of grotesque movements used by miscreants to terrorize and intimidate, used to learn the frighten emote. Yeah, it's kind of All Saints Wake themed in a way, the gift that we're getting as we earn the achievement, It's Not Easy Being Green. Yeah, that is what we're getting out of this. Not only that, because we got the egg tokens, we can turn these over to the egg advocates as and get a full Tomberry suit. Plus, a, the version of the Papaya theme that we heard during the face, which I'm personally gonna be wanting to get. I'm not all that big on getting the Tomberry costume itself, personally, um, but we will also get the Hippity Hop Hatching Tide advertisements to hang in our house, as well as some classic Hatching Tide magic prisms. I'll definitely need these for when I'm doing RP during the course of Hatching Tide. It's gonna be... Pull those out of mind you exactly what those do. 
those are some of the best hat magic prisms that you can get, and that yeah, you can only get them hatch during hatching time is a shame because they're not available on the market board for whatever reason. But nonetheless, I'm glad that we got to show off everything that was oriented and themed with Hatching Tide for 2023. And of course, getting the opportunity to hang out and have fun with my sister keeper of the moon, Gili, and her being basically the manifestation of combining Mathia and Rika into one character is something I always have enjoyed. And so, knowing that we get to hang out with her and have fun during Hatching Tide, that's always worthwhile. So, with that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching the continuation of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV and Walker. And so, when I join you again for this game, we should be getting to the start of Patch 6.4. So, we'll see how that all unfolds, and hopefully this video that I've done here today um, serves as a suitable replacement for recording off of the capture card and that the screen capture will be a better alternative for me going and doing my Let's Play of Final Fantasy XIV for the rest of the time that I'm doing it. So, thanks everyone for watching, and until next time everyone, may you ever walk in the lights.